have a pig in two different ways. One, if you have a fancy bandsaw, which some of you folks might have one of those. This works really well as a trim bucket. They're actually USDA authorized just to clean trash cans. Audio isn't coming through.
or whatever. This is the B to the X rear bacon. Nice simple. Another process that. Switching the valve from your Some of these got lots of that. I mean, some people trim it before, some people will trim it afterwards. New on it, you might want to trim it afterwards, get your quarter inch trim. Shoulder, or take the wrist off. Well, she just cut all the way around the wrist. 
ribs. Get your ribs up. Just right turn around and then through the backbone. So all the way across down to the back. Yeah, that's pretty good. See, that's not as close. That's actually really hard. Yeah, just, oh, you know, the nice thing about this conference and this video is you can watch this again and again and again and again. And you can watch it in slow motion. And, um, yes, I believe you can come out of it. Okay, so what do you do with this? Do you take your trim back, how you mean, and stuff off the rear sausage and stuff? And then the rest of it, you go to the or whatever. I guess probably this isn't so good for dogs. Probably not, sharp edges. Yeah. Alright, so we'll see you in the morning. And we'll make, we'll try not to make sausage out of that. That's, that's the money problem too? Yeah. You can have a few glands and stuff in here. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't freak out. Um. See how fast it was cutting through the bandsaw? If you have a bandsaw in your garage, man, do you have any special blade on it? You should use what they call a bone in blade, but just about any blade will work on a bad situation. Um, as long as you don't have a boneless blade, which most people are not going to have in a garage. That's more for me cutting. So like a metal blade? Or yeah, metal blade? blade or wooden blade. Um, but not a chainsaw. Not a chainsaw. <laughs> don't, don't use a chainsaw. How about a reciprocating saw? Can you do that? I would not to a catch. Okay. So don't, don't use a reciprocating saw or a chainsaw, but if you have a fan saw, wood or metal blade. And here is the other shoulder, shoulder your Boston butt. Take off your hole, you can make your hand mistakes if you want. Um, all about preference. Um, I'm using saw on this one, so it's freaking easy. Did you do the hand hocks too? You can do your, your, your shanks. Your hocks can come off without making the order. Okay. So the piece of paper. And then you can do your, if you want to do your four cuts, this is what you're going to use. If you want to make hand steaks, Yeah. 
So I know here we take these big long syringes and just inject it. Um, I'm assuming that's how you do with the home curing system as well. And then you just let it. <laughs>
Come back here. Get your spare ribs out. Okay, get it follow the rib line exactly. Not just going right behind the ribs. Oh, I have a question. Uh, what kind of knives do you recommend? There's a lot of high-end knives out there. I use Forstner knives usually at the house. Um, what do they call This Forstner. Forstner? These are immersers. And here we use at the uh, service meets a lot of times. Um, about preference. You know, there's a lot of knife shops, even in the mall, that will got some high-end knives. But you want a really good knife that actually can sharpen and sharpen and sharpen again. These guys, how often that, how often do you sharpen your knife every day when you're crossing? I the sharpen mine about once a day. Oh, so uh, we go. have people that will 
sharpen quite often. Um, and then we have, I know people that hardly ever sharpen their knives. Yeah, they're going. Slow things down. And do you need different types of knives, or that one that you're using will do the trick? Um, people have preference. It depends on how big you're doing. Um, if you're doing a big stakes or stuff like that, to use a larger knife like that so that you've got more leverage and stuff. But most of the time, for like pig and stuff, we don't need a big knife. What's the style of knife called? That's boning knife. Boning knife. Um, Forster boning knife. Uh, the house I use use an eight inch breaker blade most of the time. And that would be like that black one hanging over? Um, a little smaller than that. So eight inch breaker blade. This one is going to separate your sirloin out of it, which um, it's the same thing as the top sirloin on a cow. Like if we, if it's vacuum paint sealed vacuum properly. Vacuum sealed, it should be good for years, but you're going to lose flavor the longer it's in there. Depends on the freezer, how many deep frost cycles, how cold it is. There's too many variables to really get it accurate. How often do you open the freezer? Some people have chest freezer downstairs where they open it up and maybe once a month go out with the main upstairs, which is kind of does have. One right next to the fridge, the kids are always open <laughs> and get an ice cream or whatever else. I, I just had some, um, some bourbon that I pulled out of my freezer yesterday. It was dated 2018. It was fine. I mean, that's just me, though. I mean, some people may not be comfortable, be comfortable with, with that, but it, you know, a good year anyway. You know, usually what you're going to lose is flavor more than you're going to lose, you know, it's not going to kill you. The bacteria count isn't there. You know, once it goes in with the bacteria count, you freeze it and take them off. There's no bacteria count. So. Yeah, that's right. Once it's in the bag, it's a fairly sterile environment. Well, it has no opportunity to grow with the things. Yeah, because it's vacuum sealed as well. Well, it, it can grow in a vacuum seal, but it can't grow when it's frozen. Oh, sure. Yeah, so you got the vacuum seal, you got the vacuum, black oxygen, plus the building. So that makes sense. There's very few things. And this, you can make your full boneless pork loins. You can cut it up for steaks. Um, it's like you're going to buy a Sam's Club or whatever. You can slice your boneless pork chops up. You can do some thick ones if you want to do stuffed ones. You can do some thin ones if you want to do some breakfast steaks. Make a mini Canadian bacon out of it if you want. If you want to cure it, just like any other. That's great. So, so these are just pork, pork loin steaks. Pork chops. Boneless pork chops. So we have with the bandsaw, you can do bone-in pork chops very easily, and without a bandsaw, as you can see, um, you can do boneless pork chops just by cutting out the, the back, and then you know, this piece and this piece. 
And this piece you can come back with your saw and cut this across here, and then you got your baby back ribs also. One more time. What? One more time, please. Uh, if you cut the backbone off here, right here, right at the joint, and you've got your uh, baby back ribs. Oh, you're on the ground or whatever. But at home, if you don't have a band saw, you can still trim those and, yep. and put them into your, you your hand saw. Or your hand saw. There you go. Just use your hand saw. You've got baby back ribs. Perfect. So, so we're done with that basically. So we the basics of that. Now we'll go back to the shoulder. Go back here. Okay, well, again, we're cutting out those ribs right underneath. Just like we did before. So I'll be tripped up. Yep. That looks like pretty good pork. Look at that. Nice. And some of this is just land meat in here. It's not going to harm you. Oh, uh, it's all bloody and stuff? Okay. You got plants and you got. A few blood clots and stuff in there. It's not you going to the body, right? Uh, well, you got your glands and stuff in there. No, I just throw it away. Okay. So the pitch is glands. Yeah. That's not just glands. It's not that it would harm you. Yeah, it's just glands. It's acquired taste. Glands. Not uh, everybody is into the gland meat. Same thing, come in here, pick up for hot sauce. This is not a, uh, this is not a cutting table. It's a little raw. You can cut the fluff and, you know, do the cutting board for real good. Okay, that's the hand pot. Okay. Okay, this is called the shake. And then, same thing, you can do this as a roast, you can do it all together if you want. So you can uh, cut it up smaller because you got your bone in it. Be hard to make uh, steaks out of it with the stuff. Or you can come back in here and we'll take your bones out. So you can do a boneless roast. You can. So is that that what's the shoulder roast? Yes, this is the Boston butt with the pork shoulder. It's just making sure the shoulder's actually in the front. It's, uh, yes, it's like right, we're right here. Okay. Your chalk on your feet. You know, it is called the Boston butt, but it does not come off the hind end. And you can, uh, this makes really great pulled pork. Really awesome pork roast. Shredded pork. Yeah. So you're just basically, you're just basically just cutting in half. Um, I'm or taking the, the shoulder seam? out. There's a seam in here. This is your shoulder. Your oh, bone. Yep. So you're following that bone. Here we net the boneless roast, especially like the shoulder and stuff, so it don't fall apart, especially when you're cooking it. And you can buy netting material too. I've seen that at Cabela's and you know, other places that sell netting. Netting material, or you also uh, tie it. Oh, it's just uh, your twine. Which is meat twine. Meat twine. Meat twine. So you just tie it around a couple times. Just like you see, like a rump roast or something. I can do a rump roast or a prime rib with the uh, bones cut and tied back on. Oh, I see. That's a shoulder blade cut. Okay, cool. We don't want to eat that. Thing. No, but it gives you good flavor. 
So you guys, please, if you have any questions, ask Ron. He's very receptive. Shoulder, and then you can cut it down to more than one row, so if you want. Here at Sturgis Space, we have most, our, most off, our most popular size is three to uh, five pound rows for our family. But that gives you some idea of what size makes sense. Five pound ropes, you've got that filters, not the wrong flat filters. Yeah. So, there's that. Um, go back to your high height. Take out the field ball. And then if you didn't want to smoke it, we will bone this one out, basically. So if you want to make small bone pork roasts, or if you want to even do a boneless ham, you know. So what's your what's your recommendation for people at home? What's up? Depends on their abilities. Do they have a smoker? Do they not? If they have a smoker, I would I would do a ham personally. If they don't have a smoker and they've got a small family, I would do more boneless roast personally because they're a lot smaller easier and to handle. easier to handle afterwards, even though it is more work for prepping it. But everybody's abilities are different. You know, I'm a boneless person. I like to bone everything out. I do that for Thanksgiving, I bone out my turkey the night before, I bone out whole, and then I cook it. Really? Yeah. I bone it interesting. I split down the backbone, I bone the whole thing out whole, and I'll stuff it, and take a skewer, and basically sew it back together down the backbone, flip it over, cook it, it looks whole. Oh, Afterwards, you don't deal with any bones or anything. But. So there you go, another picture tip for those of you looking for prep ideas for your Thanksgiving turkeys. Go okay. ahead and stuff it. On this one, you got your top round here. There's a seam right through here. Basically, you're going to install your knuckle. Your knuckle. Sorry about that. And then you can do your whole boneless ham like this if you want. 
see the dash, but you can zoom it out again. You got your, your top round here. So again, Ron is just following the, 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 the logical muscle seeds there. With your top round, you can do a small, almost throws if you want. Put your eye around here. Same thing. Smaller rows. Makes you want to run right out. Eat some breakfast. Maybe you can have this for sausage. Well, the sausage, this, all this here will be trimmed out. And then it'll go to the grinder. And then you can make breakfast sausage with all the. You know, you could throw the fat in there and the, and the you know, meat trim. Just great. The sausage, you're fine with a little extra fat in it, then you do a bunch of hammer. And you get your sausage too lean. Yeah, I never mean, even expect sausage to be pretty fat. So, so what we'll do, and, and you can do this at home, is, is bone out or just trim up all this stuff, get all the bones out of it, and then we'll put it in the grinder and we'll grind it up and make. Uh, Breakfast sausage. Because that's my favorite. Make sure we're going to have a rose. Rose, your bottom round. You can have a rose if you want. You have a bone with ham. Smaller one. So, so then this is all from the shoulder. This is all from the hind leg. Oh, so the hind leg is the back leg. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so this is all from the back leg. So look at what you can do in the back leg. If you don't make your hand, you know, this is the hand all is bonus. that's all bonus. Any so, other questions, guys? No other questions for Ron? All right, so then the next step would be for after you get, don't forget to do this part here in the baby backs. And we're going to do that on the on the band saw because we've got one. But if you don't, you just take your, your normal saw and just cut right there. Cut right through. Just cut right through. One more time. Cut right through there, right where the knuckles join the backbone. And those are baby back ribs. Everybody loves those. Now, doesn't that look delicious? So, there we have it. This stuff again, trim it up, get all the bones out, throw it in your grinder, and again, if you don't have a grinder, those inexpensive grinders at Cabela's or whoever else sells grinders. KitchenAid, you've got stuff on to look up to your KitchenAid appliances. Yeah, KitchenAid, all kinds of meat grinder options out there now. Yes. And then, uh, especially now because of, because of COVID, I mean, there's a lot of people that are that are going back to processing their own meat, and so this stuff is readily available. And then you can spice it. We we sell seasonings up here at Sturgis Meats for our breakfast sausage since everybody loves it. Um, but any, you know, just anymore you can just Google everything and get what you need. And, uh, and here we have it. Just Google trim it up. Have to ship the spices to your home. That's right. Even though I advise to buy locally, but yeah, I mean, with COVID going on, I understand. Absolutely. So, any other questions before we sign off? Sophia, anybody? No anybody have anything pressing? I don't see anything. Hmm. So here's a, our look at all those chops. There's quite a bit of meat. So let's just break it down though again. again. So this is for the sausage. Hold on. Yeah, this is for the trim for the sausage. We're going to trim it up 
and uh, throw it through the grinder and we'll make breakfast sausage. This is from the, the back. This is for roast or boneless hams? From, from the from the highway. Um, we've got your whole ham back here. This is the same thing. This is one piece. This was the, that's the other option. Um, you've got your sideboard for your bacon back here. You've got your James for smoking or got two sides for, for bacon. So we'll uh, cure that and put that into the smoker. You got well, your spare ribs back here. You got your boneless pork points if you want to roast or chops. You got your boneless shoulder for uh, roast or whatever. And then over here we've got we got the boneless pork chops, the pork steaks. And we got a list from one pig. And we have very little waste. I mean, if you look at the waste, you know, and we could have saved some of that. What about that, that, that lard bucket? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll render the lard. There yeah. actually is quite a bit of waste on the whole pig when you pull a live pig. By the time you pull the, the guts out, the blood, the skin, the head, yeah, what's, your, what's your yield on that, generally? A whole pig, you're looking at about 43% coming off the top of the kill to hang. Okay, so you've got, so if you have, what's the standard? So yeah, 300 pound pig, you know, that's 120 pounds. Bitch, you'll end up throwing right. away wow. just from the start. Yeah, just from the head and guts and stuff. Head and guts and stuff. It all adds up. I mean, sometimes people get very defensive, they got you know, 300 pound pig, and then they end up with 180 pounds of meat, and you're like, where did it all go? Well, all that stuff adds up. Yeah, the bones, but you know, by the time, like this bone will get given to a dog or something, that's not going to go into your, you know, freezer. So that stuff does, all these, you know, backbones, it, there's some weight to them. So. I mean, what was the hanging weight on this one? Well, it's the size of 135 and 132, something like that. So, yeah, 132 and 125, so it's 270. Yeah. And this was a big pig going into it. But, uh, but you see, Ron was able to break that pig down, and obviously he does this all the time, but he was able to do it in under an hour. Um, if you plan on three hours or four hours to your first time, you know, you can do that. You can probably watch this video over and over and over again to get all the details. And also, there's I've seen there's tons of butchery stuff available on YouTube as well. So there's resources out there if you feel like you want to save yourself some cash and butcher your own um, pig. And if, if you've got the wherewithal to do it, it's a really good solution. Or if even you don't believe your butcher shop's giving you all your stuff, you know, you do it yourself and see, okay, this is what I lost. You know. Yeah, we get that a lot. People don't understand the loss of the butchery process. And, and with a cow, it's the same deal. Well, with a cow, even, you it's know, worse. we hang ours for 14 to 21 days, which would be about 6% loss just in hot water weight. Yeah. And you've got a thousand pound cow, 60 pounds of water weight. Yeah, it's out of. And it, yeah, it's all in how you process too for your final box. Mm -hmm. And how much bones in it, how much bones are not in it, how lean you want your beef. It was a fat cow, it was a lean cow. You know, there's so many variables. You know, there's another option too for those of you who want to do this at home. We do offer curing uh, a pair of surface meats. For people that don't have the opportunity to cure, you can actually bring in your, you know, these chunks and the hams. And uh, we cure these, we can cure these for you. I mean, it really is not a nice service. We do that, we do that quite a bit, actually. For people to process it. Oh, okay. Charge for that. It's like a 125 a pound for curing and smoking, which is a pretty good deal. It's pretty cheap. So, um, and then, because sometimes you can't get into to butcher shops. They're pretty packed up. Sometimes you don't have the time to, yeah. And usually the small shop is not backed up with our side. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, I want to thank Ron for educating us about uh, about how to butcher. And uh, Bill Kiyofowski was our videographer this, this morning, and also for Scott Brinker's uh, chef event, if you saw that, with his sister Sophia.
in attendance as his personal assistant today. And uh, don't forget, at 11.45 Central Time, we're going to have a raffle. That's 10.45 Mountain Time. And then we're going to start up again on the uh, second set of workshops shortly thereafter. So thanks again to all our sponsors and all of you for taking the time to view us today and uh, joining our South Dakota Local Foods Conference. All right, we're going to sign out. Okay, how'd it go?